What we have here are composition of functions and inverses of functions. I have two examples of functions. One function f in x is described as the square root of 2x. Another function in g um, described in the form x plus 5. Now, these are just new ways of looking at equations. Normally I would have y equals for both of these, but this is function notation. So it makes it easier when you're substituting values in. For example, f of 2. First of all, I have to decide what function am I supposed to use, the f function or the g function. I hope you said the f function. So I go to the f function and I plug 2 in. So f of 2 means the square root of 2 times 2, which is the square root of 4, which is 2. All right, g of 2, what function should I use? f function or g function? I hope you said g. So g of x equals x plus 5. So g of 2 equals 2 plus 5, 7. How about g of negative 4? g of negative 4 equals negative 4 plus 5 equals 1. When you do these for homework, I want you to write out the steps. So you copy the function, and then you show how you plug in the numbers and get the final answer. Now, just straight up functions was pretty easy. Here are some examples of composition of functions. This one is red, f of g of 3. This one, g of f of 3. F of g of x. f of g of 3. So you go inside first. Go to the g function, g of 3. So that means 3 plus 5, 8. So now I'm going to replace g of 3 with 8. So I have f of 8. You see what I did? All right. Now I go to the f function. And f of 8 equals the square root of 2x, so it equals the square root of 2 times 8, square root of 16, 4. Let's try another one of those, g of f of 3. Let's go to the inside function, f of 3. Where do I go, the g function or the f function? I hope you said the f function. So, f of 3 means to do 2 times 3. So I get 6. So, now I have g of square root of 6. Well, what do I do with that answer, square root of 6? Put it in the g function. So, g of x equals x plus 5. So g of root 6 equals root 6 plus 5. And that's as far as you can go. So that's the answer. All right. Let's try this one. f of g of x. It says to take the g of x equation, which is x plus 5, and put it in here. x plus 5. So now I go to the f equation. And wherever there's an x, I'm going to put x plus 5. So since f of x equals the square root of 2x, that's where my substitution goes. So f of x plus 5 equals the square root of 2 times x plus 5, which could equal the square root of 2x plus 10. A few more examples of composition of functions. Okay, g of 3. So I go to the g equation, put in 3. So 3 plus 1 is 4. So this now becomes f of 4. Where do I go with the 4? The f equation. f of 4 
equals 3 times 4 equals 12. All right. Go to the innermost. This one's f of g of 0. g of 0. Go to the g equation. Put in 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. So now this becomes f of 1. I take the answer I get for the substitution and substitute it or replace it. Now f of 1 is 3 times 1, 3. Okay. g of negative 6, negative 6 plus 1, negative 5. f of negative 5, 3 times 5, negative 15. Okay. h of 2. Go here. 2 squared plus 1. 2 squared is 4, plus 1 is 5. So h of 2 is 5, so replace it. So now I have f of 5. Go to the f equation, 3 times 5, 15. f of 5. 3 times 5 is 15. Plug that in. Now I have g of 15. Where do I go? Go here. 15 plus 1 is 16. What if I have h of h of 2? Go to the h equation, put in 2. 2 squared plus 1 is 5. So now I have h of 5. Go to the h equation, put in 5. 5 squared is 25 plus 1, 26. You can do these. That's composition of functions. Now we'll do some inverse of functions. Another thing you have to deal with in, with functions is determining if the functions have inverses. I have four different graphs here, and when you're looking at the graph of a function, you can tell if it has an inverse if it passes what's called the vertical line test. I like to use my pencil as a vertical line. Let's use a, let's use a colored pencil. It's easier to see. Colored pencil. Now. A function has an inverse if it passes the vertical line test. To pass the test, any place you pass the vertical line along the graph, it can only hit the graph once. If it hits the graph more than once, it's not a function. So, here, if I go just through that point, I hit it once, but can I find some places where I can hit it twice? Yeah. So, is that a function? No. So, no. All right. Let's check the next one. Can I pass my vertical line here. Multiple places, every place I put it, it only hits the graph once. Is that one a function? Yes. How about the next one? What do you think? Take a vertical line. Test it. Can you hit the graph more than once, keeping the line vertical? Oh yeah. I can hit it three, four times. One, two, three, four times. So, um, is that one a function? No. How about that one? Yes, that one is a function too. This line, I guess I drew it a little bit crazy, but it, it's continuing to get lower and lower and lower. So that one does pass the vertical line test. Now, there are, are other ways to test whether functions, um, graphs of functions are not here. I don't have a picture of the graph. I could type it into my graphing calculator and look at it. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but that comes out to be a straight line, and it passes my vertical line test. So, yeah, that has a function. And, um, and if you type this one in, you find out yes, and if you type this one in, you find out no. Now, when you have the function as a given equation, there's also three steps, a three-step process to find the inverse function. What is the name of the inverse function? Now, one thing that the inverse function does is it flips the graph about the line y equals x, or this line here. So, all these graphs that are functions, the inverses of them are flipped about this line. So, this piece becomes here, and this piece becomes here. This one, that goes that way. This part goes this way. This part here goes down here like that. Um, so graphs that don't have inverses, we don't have to worry about graphing them. So this function has an inverse. 
What if I don't have a graph? Um, how else can I find the inverse? Well, there's three steps to use to find the inverse. What's really important is the use of algebra to find the inverse of a function. And there's three steps. One, replace the f of x with y. Second step, switch x with y, and vice versa. So switch all the x's become y's, all the y's become x's. Step three, solve for y. Once you get everything switched, it will take a little bit of solving. All right, here we go. First step, replace f of x with y. y equals 2x minus 3. Now, switch all the x's and y's. x equals 2y minus 3. Now, solve it for y. Add 3 to both sides. So, x plus 3 equals 2y. What do I do next? Divide by 2. So, I get y equals x plus 3 over 2. And there's the inverse. You can call it f inverse x equals x plus 3 over 2. This is special inverse notation. You should get used to using that. Also, I guess that could be a fourth step if we wanted. Use inverse notation. So, there you go. You can try some of these. All right, let's do another example. I forgot something really important on the last one I did. Before you do the four steps for finding the inverse, you need to type the equation into your graph and calculator and see if it passes the horizontal line test. So on this function, you can see I typed it into my calculator, and now I do the horizontal line test. Yep, it passes. The horizontal line only hits it once. Because the algebra will work for all the functions, whether they're inverses or not, but the only functions that have inverses are ones that pass the horizontal line test. So don't forget to test before you do all the work. Um, so on this one, first step, replace. So y equals x plus 6 over 3. I did step 1. Step 2, switch the x's and y. So x equals y plus 6 over 3. Step 3, solve for y. Ooh, this one's a little tricky. Multiply both sides by 3 first. Then I get 3x equals y plus 6. Now it's easy. Subtract 6. You with me there? So then I get y equals 3x minus 6. Did that. Use inverse notation. f inverse x equals 3x minus 6. There is the inverse function. Okay, let's try one more. So, I got to do the four steps, right? Uh-oh. Check the graph first. Check graph. So, I should change this to have one more step. Check graph. With what? Horizontal. Line test. So, type that one in. Let's see what happens here. Oh no! No inverse! So, all I have to do is write no and I don't have to do anything like follow the five steps that we now have. One, two, three, four, five steps we now have for finding an inverse. Check the graph first. Don't want to do all that work if you don't have to, if it doesn't have an inverse. That one doesn't pass the inverse test. Okay.